In this video I am going to demonstrate how to assemble the cosplayer. This is a device which based on a single stimulation event, for instance as delivered by one of your measurement devices, allows you to output an entire train of stimulation events as specified by you in a standardized format file. Uh, looking at the device itself, it consists of an aluminium body with a number of PNC connectors poking out and number of holes which you will need both to get visual feedback from and to interact with the internal electronics. Uh, moving onward to the construction of the device, we will first need to mark out the regions which we need to mill out of the aluminium body uh, so as to thread the connectors through and to attach the internal electronics. This is best done by marking them with a pencil on the outside of the aluminium body as you can see, starting with the contour of the pie board, which is the central electronic component of the device, specifically marking the holes which we need for the screws and for the slit, which allows us to see the LED visual feedback from the pie board. One of the holes is underneath the rubber insulation. On the outside of the device, we will also need to mark uh, approximately the location of the BNC connectors. The exact location will be determined while drilling, and there are six of them, so we have six markings, with a seventh one on the front plate. There's more holes which we need on the front plate, for instance, to access the USB connector of the Pi board and the SD card slot, and these are best marked on the inside, simply because it's easier to just hold the pie board in place and then hold the, um, the front plate in front of it. Here's the other hole to hold the pie board in place, and here are the markings which we need for the rest of the access to the device. Moving on with these markings to the milling table, you can see the aluminium body is attached into place with a drill hovering above it and with this drill we are now going to drill away the holes for the screw attachment of the pie board. Uh, it's best to know the diameter, the approximate diameter which you will need because this will of course dictate the diameter of your drill head. It's done on both sides. And as soon as that is done and we know exactly where the pie board will be placed in the end, simply because now we have the attachment points defined, we can again place the pie board on top of the aluminium body uh, and make sure that the rest of the holes which we drill correspond exactly to the features which we need to see and access. First off comes the LED slit, uh, which we uh, ascertain is indeed correctly marked given the fixed position of the pie board. As you can see, we are now drilling with a different head. This is simply because, unlike the holes, uh, the slit is drilled from one side, and this means that the drill head will not connect with the body on all sides while it is drilling. This means that we need a drill head with higher stability, and we might also want to add some oil to ease the friction, uh, which we'll do on, um, at a later point for similar operations. Right now we're just going bit by bit by bit shaving through this uh, aluminium body and we'll speed the video up simply because this is uh, even more so than you can see now a uh, time consuming process just because you really want to uh, shed really small bits of the aluminium and not too much at once. That we're going through. Uh, and as you can see behind the drill there's uh, a lot of ridges left in the sides of the aluminium simply because this is not a continuous movement of the drill through the aluminium. That would put even more strain on the drill head. But this is really just a collection of partly overlapping holes. Uh, as soon as we're done with this part we will smooth it out by going once around the edges to remove those ridges. So I'll see that in a second. right now. And as you can see behind the drill head there is a smooth surface for the sides of the aluminium.
Moving onward to the next step, we need holes to access the buttons of the pie board. Uh, right now we simply hover the drill above them, doesn't need to be rotating, uh, and we record the location of these holes. And once we've recorded them, we can simply go down with the drill to make sure that our holes are really perfectly above the now fixed defined location of the pie board. Uh, as you can see, one of the holes will merge with the LED slit. This is going to happen uh, at least one more time during this drilling but it's, uh, it's okay, the stability of the aluminum body given its thickness is definitely not compromised. Moving now to the forward plate of the aluminum body, uh, we've mounted the, uh, the pie board inside the body as you can see in, uh, in this shot. Uh, so right now again we have the fixed defined location of the pie board so we can measure whether our initial contours were correct and adjust them. You can see we've made some minor adjustments and now that we know where exactly the slits are located we can move on to drilling them. What we will notice while we are doing this is that the two slits given the diameter of our drill will end up overlapping so it will just be one big slit for access to both the USB port and the SD card slot. This is just a measurement where we basically move move the uh, component around and record coordinates and now we're going down to drill the first of the constituent holes of the slit. As you can see again, we're not just uh, swiveling with a drill head through the aluminium, uh, but we are making an array of holes which we can then connect and smooth out. This is quite time consuming, so we'll speed it up in a bit. And here we are with the last of the constituent holes of the slit. And as soon as we've done this, we can clean away all of the debris. And move to the other drill head. Now as you can see oiled so that we can smooth out uh, everything into one big slit. As you can see right now we just went through the middle so there are still a number of ridges left on the sides. Uh, but we will move the drill even closer to the sides and then go through all of these ridges to clear everything out as you can see in this shot. Uh, however, there's one more issue which has popped up at this point, namely we, uh, we have noticed that the USB cables which you would need to connect to the USB connector of the Pi board usually come with a rather thick plastic coating and given how far recessed the USB connector is uh, inside of this uh, front plate uh, basically we're not able to reach it fully as long as that plastic is is encasing the connector so we have two choices either either to cut off the plastic from any usb connector we ever plan to use with this device or to simply make sure that it can get close enough and uh, since we can't de-recess it uh, we're just going to make a hole in this front uh, front plate which is broad enough like the, the usual plastic coating around USB connectors and which allows us to get close enough to the pie board with the connector. You can see we do this in both sides, so this is basically like a bevel inside the front plate, which is where the USB connector plastic fits in. One thing is still missing from the forward-facing plate of the device, 
and that is a hole for the BNC connector which will relay the trigger for instance from the measurement device which gives the single triggering pulse. This is not one of the six connectors which we have marked on the sides of the case and on the back facing plate. This is a seventh connector. Moving on to the sides of the device, uh, these are the holes for the BNC connectors. This, this is a bit tricky simply because the aluminum body has some elements inside which means that here again we have partial connection with them. But uh, this is what it looks like and it's the same on the other side. The one thing we are still left with is the back plate where we drill another two holes just as we did on the front plate. Again, it's important to figure out the diameter of a drill which you need. It's going to be the same diameter as your BNC connectors. Uh, and of course the holes are going to be round, which I know is not the ideal shape for a B uh, BNC connector. You'd want D holes, but uh, there we go. The limit is not just, just given by convenience for the drilling, but also by the fact that um, we will need to hold them into place somehow and you can basically not turn the nut of the BNC connector. Moving on to the next phase where we put together the circuitry for the device we will need the following components. This includes first and foremost a soldering gun as well as a number of wires from which we can remove the insulation as shown in the bottom right of the screen. Once we've done this we can move on to take the strip board and place it in the helping hand which will aid us in filming and start putting in the first component. This will be a resistor which we can squeeze in by bending its legs and threading it through the holes where it has to go in the strip board and then pulling it tug. Uh, in order for us to be able to film this we're going to turn the strip board upside down and so that the resistor doesn't fall out we are going to bend its legs outward. We will do this with a number of components. Uh, it's not necessary if you do it uh, yourself and you don't intend to film uh, but it aids us in keeping everything in place. The legs can be cut off at the beginning or at the end of the procedure so as to not get in the way. Uh, if you look on the top right you'll always see the circuit uh, diagram. In red the components which we're working on or we have just worked on and in black the components which are already there. Uh, you can see the pie board is already there simply because it's provided. And we can move on to applying the solder. This is done by placing the soldering gun on the metal, meaning on the connectors of the resistor or on the strip board and heating it up to the point where the solder will actually melt onto it. For this you would ideally use a higher temperature than what is necessarily required to melt the solder, so about 300 degrees is a good temperature to have. And once you hold it there for a while you will notice that the solder will melt onto the metal, meaning that it will be sucked in, uh, particularly into the small spaces such as the spaces between the hole of the strip board and the um, connector of the resistor. We do this for both ends of the resistor. You want to feed in not too much, not too little. Right now that was a tiny bit too much. Uh, the problem is the more you feed in, the more you risk spilling over and making contacts which you don't want to have. But having a look at it, this, this seems to be okay. Uh, and putting it back, we can move to the next component after we've cleaned off the rest of the resistor con contacts. Sometimes helps to turn the, the threads of the wire around just so that uh, they stick together better. And again, after placing the wire, we can bend it. Uh, this is also just done so to keep things better in place for filming. If you are able to bend it, it can create some tension while connected to the other alligator clip so that it is tug and you can see everything clearly and it doesn't wobble around, meaning that you have good control over the position which the wire will end up having. There we go, now everything is in place. And the exact same technique can be applied here. You just press the soldering tool against the metal of the cable until it heats up. And then you 
press the soldering metal slowly into the metal of the um, cable. And as soon as the metal is hot enough, it will basically soak up the, the liquid metal in between the tiny cables and inside the hole in the strip board. It takes a while, you'll notice the solder just disappearing into, into the wire. Okay, having done that, we can move on to inserting the transistor. We do the same thing with, we did with the resistor now with the transistor, meaning that we thread the legs through the connectors. Uh, and as soon as we've done that, we basically push them apart. We deform them so that they are fixed to the strip board. Again, this is not a definitive fix. This is just a preliminary fix so that the component hangs on the strip board while we apply the solder. Again, same procedure, hold the, hold the soldering tool against the metal and let everything heat up and then feed the soldering metal into it. Sometimes it might get stuck you let it cool down before pulling your metal away. And of course we do this for all three connectors. And ideally we check whether or not everything is really tightly into place. We're showing you all of the steps here for the sake of completeness, but we will speed up by not showing all of the components of the circuit individually. Once we have provided this as a reference of how to really solder everything together for one of the BNC connectors. The not putting too much metal, metal bit comes into play here, simply because you have a lot of connections close to each other. Again, we can cut off the rest. This is not just to make it user friendlier and less prone to scratching you, but also to avoid um, uh, accidentally connecting things together. For instance, if a piece of metal touches something or any of the excess connectors somehow end up touching each other. Uh, we have one more cable now, which will connect part of the BNC port to the transistor. And another cable which will connect the um, other side of the BNC port to the other side of the transistor. Again, we can just loop the, uh, the 
the isolated metal along the strip board simply to give us uh, a bit of uh, tugness in the cord that it doesn't flop around. And as you can see, this does not yet connect fully back to the Pi board. Uh, for that, we will need one more cable, which then allows us to also connect the second BNC connector circuit uh, into it. Uh, we have quite a bit of excess metal left on this one, so we snip that away. And here we go with the last cable from this arrangement, which connects uh, the entire circuit back to the Pi board. As you can see, this ended up having quite a bit of metal, so in excess of cutting off the excess from the cable, we might need to have a closer look and determine whether or not this isn't maybe touching the um, conductive material from the other side of the strip board, so, so to say from the next lane. It doesn't really seem to, but just to be safe, you can always do this. You can simply go between the lanes with a sharp tool and then whatever might have been there will be just cut away and you can be certain that there's no um, connections which you don't want in your circuitry. There we are, so we're, we're done with this first BNC connector circuitry and we're gonna have a closer look at it. This is what it looks like from the back in red, what we've just added and from the front so that you can see the components. Moving on to the next BNC connector, this is what we're going to have to add now for that from the back and from the top so that you can see the individual components. Now we're moving to the other side uh, with one more BNC connector which requires these additional components as you can see marked in red on the other side. And basically when we finish up everything it's going to look a bit like this and like this from the top so that you can see all of the components. Now we're gonna have to put everything together to assemble it. Uh, you see our strip board, which is now soldered together to give us the circuit we want. The Pi board, of course. And the aluminum body, which we milled earlier together with the screws and the connector plates back and front. Those are the screws which we need to fix the Pi board into place. Those uh, plastic spacers are gonna be the cause for quite a bit of adventure. Uh, what you see back there are the BNC connectors, which will go through all of these holes, and that up there is our makeshift BNC connector inserter tool. We're going to use it to hold the nut part of the connector into place while we screw the bolt in from the outside. Uh, this is why we can't do the D-shape, which is typical for holding BNC connectors in place and which is actually better. The small key we will need to hold the hexagonal nuts in place while we screw in the screws which hold the pie board in. Uh, but before we do all that, you might have noticed that some of these cables needed to be connected to the pie board. Uh, we soldered them into place via the exact same procedure, uh, taking a tiny bit more care here because we really don't want to overheat the board or damage any of the components. 
There we go, feeding in the soldering metal. And that should be enough. As you can see now, if you look carefully, it didn't make it didn't connect with the actual pie board well enough. That's simply because the metal wasn't hot enough. So it stuck to the soldering tool, which was hotter. And here's another cable connected. Again, a bit tricky to get the, the board hot enough for, for the soldering metal to actually stick into it. And here we have the, the complete circuit with the strip board and the pie board. And now that we have this, we can move on to the actual assembly. Uh, it's going to be important for this step to actually make sure that we can find our way through this mess of cables. What we do is we find the connectors which uh, correspond to one, uh, we find the cables which correspond to one BNC connector and we twist them together so that we won't lose them from each other. And we do this really for each pair of cables which correspond to one BNC connector. So there should be seven in total. Uh, we want to screw them together really nicely so they don't come undone while we're going to move all of this inside the aluminium body. And of course, once we've done all this, we will want to mark all of these so that we know which ones which. We do this by gluing bits of tape at their end, uh, which indicates the number and T for the trigger. Now, ideally, we won't, we don't want the um, the metal of the body touching all of these connectors. Uh, and we also don't want them touching anything else which might be conductive uh, for any reason. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick something on the back, uh, which is going to insulate the open connections from the circuit board and which it was our initial hope would allow us to um, more fixly attach it to the body. This is why we have this like special M3 uh, nub uh, connector. But uh, that's not going to happen because we don't have enough space. So this is just going to serve for insulation purposes. There we go, stick it to it. And now we can bundle everything up together. Uh, this is why you might want to make sure that your soldering connections are nice and solid. And just shove it into the aluminum body. Um, this might be a very good reason to not choose the same aluminum body which we have chosen. Ideally you'd have something which opens up and then you don't have to go through this adventurous assembly part. Uh, as you can see, there's very little freedom of movement and it's very crowded inside. Uh, so even or perhaps especially attaching these, uh, these nuts and bolts will be um, quite an act. We actually don't show it simply because it, it turned out to be very difficult to film. Uh, but in addition to being difficult to film, it was certainly very, very difficult to do. Um, so what you want to do is you want to place these spacers on top somehow and then thread the bolts through and then hold the nuts in place with the key while you turn the bolts. Now this is everything being held in place. Uh, and here we have some tape at the end of the key that's just to make sure that the nut stays there even without us applying pressure from the opposite side. So basically you have a bit of tape, which makes it stick there. So we can move around a bit more with the key without losing the nut. Uh, sadly, this doesn't help that much, or actually it, it helps enormously, but it still doesn't make the job particularly easy. Yeah, it's a bit of a hassle. So we're just gonna skip through it at this point and move on to the finished state where we basically screwed the pie board into place and we have all of the um, cables corresponding to BNC connectors sticking out of the respective holes. Uh, now, the next thing we'll want to do is to attach the actual BNC connectors. And they basically have to go in there 
and this is going to be a bit tricky simply because first off the order matters so you want to start with the innermost connectors because otherwise you won't be able to reach them with the BNC connector insertion tool uh, but as soon as you figure that, that out you're going to want to shove the cables back in and thread them through the nut of the BNC connector Ideally, this would have been done before uh, the entire insertion, so while we were shoving everything inside, uh, but sadly, we hadn't figured this out that early. So what we're going to have to do now is go back, uh, push the individual things, uh, the individual cables back in, and then thread them back out through the nuts. Uh, again, given the confined space, this is going to turn out to be quite difficult. speeding everything up although there's not really that much meaningful information to extract from here other than it's uh, it's going to be a pain if you don't have an aluminium body which opens up uh, but it is certainly doable you simply pull the, the cables through and once you've done that you can move on to soldering uh, this is an example of how we solder this the procedure is really the exact same as with the strip board uh, just that it might take a bit longer to heat the, the ends of the BNC connector up simply because they're uh, more massive than the limited amount of metal which you have on the strip board. You just shove them back in, they have nice and handy holes which hold them into place and you heat everything up with your soldering tool. As I said this might take a bit of time and uh, if you are uh, very observant you will notice something here. If you look very closely, you will notice that this still has the nut attached to it. Now, I didn't realize this while I was soldering, and this is what makes it quite funny for me to rewatch this sequence. Uh, simply because I know that I was staring at it the entire time and I didn't notice this. And I'm moving closer to the moment of truth when I realize what, what, what kind of an idiot I've been. There we go. Everything's, ah, everything looks so great. I can cut off the excess cable. Oh man, so nice. Now the click sound when I when I realize my mistake, it's it's really pr priceless. Re no, no, squeeze it into place. Yeah, 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 Christian, very good, very good. Ah, that click sound, amazing. Well, you'd have to desolder that and put it back in, and once you have, you have all of your PNC connectors screwed into place. As you can see. And everything you need to do now is to close everything up. Which is quite simple at this point. And now you have everything closed up together with all of the holes which you need for your BNC connectors. And of course to access the electronics inside. Um, ideally you can also add numbers for the BNC connectors so that you know which one is which. And this is what the device should look like in the end. The small user's workflow, uh, which is stuck on top, you can simply download from the cosplayer website and attach uh, by printing it on a sticker. Thank you for watching this video demonstration of how to make a cosplayer and now that you know how, go make yourself an amazing cosplayer.